On today's video, I head back down to Niagara Falls and we're going to be checking out the border, the Rainbow Bridge. Also going to see how busy it is. And then we'll look into the situation in India, which has become very, very dire. And I'm sure it's affecting our local Indian population here. Then we'll check out this guy. He's got a flag upside down. And we are about to Morse code SOS. And then I'll buy a very expensive coffee. Hello to you all and welcome to another video and today I'm uh, once again back in the Niagara Falls region and Niagara Falls itself for another video and one of the things I want to highlight in today's video regarding Covid is the, uh, the Rainbow Bridge which is right behind me. Um, a couple of weeks back and even last weekend I tweeted about kind of a little loophole that's going on here uh, at the border and as you can see just be, uh, behind me there is a taxi waiting and what happens is uh, you can actually cross over the Rainbow Bridge here by foot and they have a screening place just here and as we can see there's someone actually just walking up right now and what's been happening is people have been able to come into the uh, cross over the US side, make their way over, go to the screening and then they uh, jump in a taxi like this one which is just circling around right now to pick someone up and uh, then they take you and it's a loophole so you don't have to uh, go into a hotel for three days uh, whereas if you flew directly into Toronto you would have to isolate for three days or maybe more. Now, I must stress, I'm not saying that everyone that comes over is actually doing that, uh, but there has been quite a few reports. Uh, a friend of mine reported last week and I tweeted about it. Um, a taxi came over, US plates, uh, went to the bus station here and they just flew into the US instead of flying to Canada so they could avoid uh, doing the quarantine. Uh, they just paid a hundred and something dollars for the taxi and shared it amongst themselves and it worked out to be a lot cheaper. Right, I just watched this taxi. It's gonna come up in a second. Um, they've all just had the uh, COVID test done and now they're allowed straight into Canada. So there's a loophole somewhere. Now I don't know where this taxi is gonna take them after this. Uh, lo and behold, I haven't got a clue. Uh, but taking them somewhere. It's probably come, yep, airport service. Yep. As you can see from uh, down here, it's actually very, very quiet today. Uh, very quiet. It's nice for taking a stroll though. People are sitting out front having a coffee. Might go and join them. Uh, just a grande coffee, please. A grande coffee. Uh, pike roast. Pike? Yes, please. Just black, right? Uh, with milk and sugar. Where's your milk? Like double, double? One milk, two sugar, please. One milk, two sugar, sure. Yeah. All right. As you heard of me when I was in there, <laughs> that's got to be the most expensive coffee. I've ever, ever ordered in my life. Uh, a Grande Coffee Starbucks, uh, $4.88, $4.88. Wow, well, the customer service was fantastic, uh, but the coffee's not worth $4.88, I can assure you.
Public Health Ontario has now confirmed 36 cases of the new variant out of India is now in Ontario. And it's now raising a grave concern, especially with what's going on in India at this very moment in time. Public Health Ontario continues to actively monitor these new variants that are coming in, especially the B1617 variant, which seems to be the very highly transmissible variant, which is spreading rampantly. This news just comes hours after the uh, Canadian government actually stopped all flights direct from India and Pakistan from coming into Canada and vice versa. And within minutes, the announced this new variant is now being found in Ontario. As for the flights themselves, uh, all direct flights from India and Pakistan have now been banned in Canada, and that ban is expected to last for a whole month. However, being here at the border, there is still a way you can get through. Apparently, if you take a flight from India, let's say Mumbai or New Delhi, you can get a flight from there, maybe fly to Brussels or you can fly to Dubai. Uh, and then from there, you can connect to the connecting flight either directly into Canada or you can fly into the US. And once you're in the US, you can then make your way up to Buffalo uh, or Niagara Falls right here and just cross over the bridge on foot, get yourself a taxi and there you go. You're, you're across the border. You don't have to quarantine. These are some of the loopholes that are going on. And it's, not, it's just not the people from India and Pakistan that are doing this. A lot of Canadians are coming back this way as well. A lot of the snowbirds which were down in the, uh, Florida for the winter have now come back this way into Buffalo, into Niagara Falls, get a taxi, come right across, and they don't have to uh, isolate. India is facing a catastrophic crisis never seen before in living history. The second most populated country in the world is in a crisis, a country of 1.4 billion people. A month ago, India recorded around about 10,000 COVID cases. Now that daily figure is over 350,000. 350,000 in a month, huge. Uh, deaths went from below 90 per day to over 2,600 in 24 hour periods. And that's just within the last couple of weeks the hospitals in uh, India are completely overrun uh, with the sick and the dying just left there completely. Um, these are some of the images I've seen on, the, on, on TV recently on the news from Europe, which seems to be concentrating and being more graphic than what they are here in Canada. Uh, these are some of the images. Um, this is one of the images I'm going to show you right now. This is from renowned uh, journalist from Sky News in the UK, uh, Alex Crawford. India set a worldwide record nobody wants whilst this family brought their mother, but saw her die minutes after reaching what they hoped was help. We've only been here a few hours and we've seen, what, half a dozen people die in front of us outside here. It's images like these, uh, that these ones I honestly believe the anti-mask and anti-lockdown uh, so-called freedom fighters were expecting to see these kind of images here in Canada when the COVID started. But because it never happened, they just went around doing what they wanted to do, believing that COVID wasn't real. Uh, but is this real enough for you now? This is a country that was doing quite well just until a month ago. It let its guard down and now it's paying the price. There probably is no more graphic an illustration of just how bad the coronavirus crisis is hitting India than this. This is a makeshift crematorium. It's actually not meant to exist. At this very moment in time, my thoughts are with the Indian and Pakistani community here in the Niagara region. Um, what they must know and what they're going through right now is basically hell and back. Uh, they know what the families are going through. Many of them will have big families back over there. Uh, they came over to Canada, started a new life. Many of them are settled in the Niagara region over the years, months or whatever. And this is now their home. But their, their mainland, their homeland is still back over there in India and Pakistan. And they're now going to be going through torment knowing what their family members are going through, where people are just dying second by second over there due to this horrible illness, this horrible disease called COVID. Please won't someone do something to help All right, here in the Niagara region, the local numbers still keep climbing. Uh, yesterday, the 24th of April, we had 169 new cases throughout the region, and total deaths now in the region are 387. I just found out of someone, a good source, uh, that the, uh, we now have a total of 89 people in the Niagara Health System that have now been hospitalized uh, due to COVID. But I can't remember the top of my head how many are in the ICU, so I'm not gonna quote it, but 89 right now have been hospitalized due to COVID, and they're all in all different age groups. 
Uh, speaking of age groups, I can tell you the 20 to 30 year old age group is the biggest bracket of it comes to people being infected by COVID right now in our region. All right, the three hotspots in our region when it comes to COVID numbers are, of course, the three main towns. We've got Niagara Falls, St. Catharines, and Welland. Uh, but these other towns aren't that far behind. So I'll put a whole list of stats up so you can check them out. A, pub, a full link to the Niagara Health Public uh, website so you can check all the stuff out there yourself. Normally at this time of year, uh, there'll be huge lineups at places like this. Uh, for the hornblower, formerly made of the mist, which is now the other side. Uh, but the hornblower, the zip line in. Uh, well, you can tell on a beautiful spring day, late April, not a soul in line because it's closed and hardly anyone around. All right, just this uh, past few days here at Niagara Falls, somewhere just down here, or was it over there? I'm not too sure. Uh, there was a protest held. Uh, once again, the same people who were here protesting at the weekend and the same ones at St. Catharines the weekend before. And what they did, they flew an upside down Canadian flag as a sign of uh, in distress. And then they sent an SOS signal out over the border. Now, SOS to me is a matter of life and death situation. Um, like a boat in distress or someone stranded on an island. Uh, but SOS, being in a lockdown is not SOS. You, that is just the most stupidest thing. And it's just a poor, poor publicity stunt. Muppets really are Muppets. Yeah, it's only fair that I can call them Muppets because they do call us sheeple and other things like that. So anyway, this is the SOS they're trying to send out. They're trying to use flashlights. And you can see this guy with his hood up hasn't got a clue what he's doing. He really hasn't. And there is even someone there telling them what to do, and they're just not getting it. So the whole thing is quite uh, comical, but yet cringeworthy at the same time. I think he just stopped to probably take the best photograph anyone could. He actually stopped, slap bang in the middle of the bridge, looked straight down and got probably the best photograph ever. All right, I'm, I'm interested to know whether anyone else who is watching this has put themselves on a standby list for the um, COVID vaccination and still not heard anything. Uh, especially if you're under 30, oh sorry, under 40. Uh, two weeks ago, I registered at my local pharmacy and then a few days later, I registered with Shoppers Drug Mart and then I registered at Costco and I got no call, nothing. And then uh, yesterday, just because it's been over like 10 days since I first registered and heard nothing, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go back and find out what's going on. So uh, the pharmacy sent me a link. So I filled it out, a separate link this one is, and it allowed me to book my appointment right there online, right there and then online. So I now have my first appointment, which is for uh, Sunday morning to get my first AstraZeneca vaccine, uh, or as I would like to call it, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccination. Uh, so anyone else had this problem where you've been put on a list, a standby list to try and get the vaccine, but no one's called, and you've been able to just go onto another website and actually book your own appointment. Uh, if that's the case, this just proves what another shit show this whole vaccination rollout has been. Something so simple like we've been put on standby lists and no one calls us, but yet then we can go onto another website and actually book it automatically and get a time and date. Uh, that is very, very frustrating. Very frustrating. All right, just to show you how busy it is, which is not. I just put a time lapse uh, setting on the camera up there and just do a time lapse. I'll just area for a few minutes and see how many people walk by. And uh, you'd be surprised, it's pretty quiet, but you get to see a nice view. I still can't get over the fact I paid $4.88 for a coffee at Starbucks down here. 4.88.
Now, I've not been to Starbucks for about six months, so uh, how much is a coffee normally? I just had a regular pike roast. Grande, 488. Last time I bought one of them, I thought it was $2.50 I paid. Even that was expensive. All right, I drove down Clifton Hill uh, on my way in, and I can uh, confirm that uh, everything's closed up there. Uh, major construction going on as well. Uh, so if it was busy, it would be a pain in the ass to uh, navigate all that. Uh, the road is pretty narrow in places due to the cones where they put them up. So I can assure you though, uh, everything up there is closed. Closed, there's nothing open. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to comment. Like and subscribe as well if you've not already done so. And I'm going to leave you with some nice images of Niagara Falls itself. Take care. See you all soon.